coming up. My father was a fisherman and stuff, you know, and you know, my mom used to do a little bit of cleaning back then and stuff. Not now, they're good now, but um, like, back then. Help, help or like house cleaning. Yeah, my mom was a yeah, my mom was a helper back then and stuff. To be honest, I was just excited, you mm. know, to play for West Indies and you know what I mean when I when one of the players asked me, Kirk Edwards, <laughs> we was we were sitting down and he was like, little man. Do you know how much money you're gonna get for these two games? I was like, no. Mm-hmm. When he told me the figure, I was like, nah, but that man, I get goosebumps at the same time. What was the figure at the time? Well, oh, well, the figure at the time was was, was 17,000. 17,000 US? Yeah, a game mm-hmm. at that time. Not at that, hey everyone, so this week on the Trailblazers, we have the very inspiring story of West Indies cricketer Jermaine Blackwood, who is one of the top young cricketers in the sport. Now, Jermaine grew up in very humble circumstances in White House, Westmoreland, but through his talent, his dedication, and of course, hard work, has been able to change the fortunes of his family and himself. Stay tuned to find out just how he did it, plus his rules for success. And store partners, the Jamaica Pegasus Hotel, Kingston's preferred choice. Stars publicity for all your public relations and publicity needs. Get noticed and align with the stars. DG's Health and Wellness Center, operated by certified nutritionist and health columnist Donovan Grant. Contact them today for all your weight loss and other nutritional needs. And Carers Beauty, for all your skincare goals and more. Get 5% off each purchase from them using the discount code TAMARA5OFF. Learn more details on all these partners as well as links to their website by visiting the description box on the Trailblazers with Tamar McHale YouTube channel. What's your word to them? I would say to fight. Fight for your dreams. Fight for your purpose. The life that inspires you. That mode that you aspire to be. Right? Uh, in my humble opinion, is become very comfortable with yourself. Very important. You know, the saying in Jamaica, one hand can clap. You forgive yourself for allowing people to mistreat you. Disciplines that we need to embody. You just have to work at it and be committed to everyone. And it's scary to have all of that fall away from you. And you have to celebrate those wins. Work with fitness clients. For guidance, rely on Christ for support. And no rush. I did it. I'm, I made my move into entrepreneurship at 40. Um, so chicken, so scared. That when what, you know, last comments would you want to share with you? You have your core values. You do the right things. It'll fall in place for you. Pleasure to have you joining us on the Trailblazers. It's the first time I'm having a West Indies cricketer, so you're the first. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. And I mean, you have done quite a lot at still a young age, and that's very admirable. And we're going to jump right into your story because a lot of people see you have a lot of followers, a lot of people see you playing cricket for West Indies. But you know, sometimes people see the success and they really don't know the journey and they don't know the path that you had to take to get to where you're at. So yeah, to tell us about yourself. I knew that you are originally from Westmoreland, but I think you, you were born in St. Elizabeth. So tell me about your early years. Oh yeah, I'm, um, I'm from White House, Westmoreland, but I was born in St. Elizabeth um, in Black River because the border between you know Westmoreland and St. Elizabeth is so close. and you have a hospital up two minutes from 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 out of Westmoreland border. So I was born in um, Black River Hospital, Elizabeth, but I'm from Westmoreland. My parents, mom, dad, brothers, I'm a sibling, are from Westmoreland White House. Okay, I kind of understand what you mean because, like me, my family's from Trelawney, and I was actually born in Manchester. But the same thing in yeah. terms of the whole hospital situation. Okay, so. I mean, what was life like for you growing up as a child? Were, you know, were you always like interested in cricket and playing it? Um, yeah, to be honest, from a tender age, because my two brothers used to play, play cricket, um, Bruce and you. So, you know, I always wanted to follow in, 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 in them footsteps. So they would normally like take me to their games, to their practices from, I was somewhere like about 
eight, seven. So I, you know, immediately fall, fall in love with, with, with cricket from a tender age because of, because of my two brothers, to be honest. Wow, that's awesome. So th- did they play like competitively or it was just like at a local level? Um, well, um, Bruce, Bruce Black would represent Jamaica um, under 15. I think, I think um, my brother, you, um, I think he didn't make the team, but because of some passport issued, issues, he didn't went. So you could say Bruce represent Jamaica, uh, national team under 15 and my brother. So they were, they were pretty good for the age at, at that time. Awesome, yeah. awesome. Um, so then how did you know, you know, tell me about the journey because you said you're, you're from Westmoreland, your brothers used to play cricket, but at yeah. what point did you realize like, okay, this is something that you're actually very talented in? Was it that you were encouraged by your same brothers to do this competitively or it just kind of just happened? Um, no, not really. Um, because I was, you know, with my brothers at, you know, at a young age, you know, all around Jamaica with them, following them um, to play some school cricket as well. And I was always there watching. So, you know, from a tender age, I was like, you know, I want to do this because I always like people come out and and, and, and watch cricket playing. And I was like, you know, hmm, I think, you know, this is something I, I really want to do when I when I grow up. And then, you know, um, I went to New Hope Primary and Junior High School in White House. And, you know, from there, um, my coach Grant Reed, that that is the first coach I ever worked with, from a from a from a tender age, and he you know he showed me the basics, you know. So I just want to give a big shout out to Grant Reed because if it wasn't for him, I'd, you know, I don't think I'd be here today because he taught me the basics of cricket and you know yeah. how to play and all that. So yeah, it started from 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 there. And then so that was primary school, but then in high school. The journey continued. Yeah. Which high school you yeah. went to? Yeah, I went to I went to Homo Technical High School. Oh, and yeah, in Manchester. Yeah, I, I, yes, in Manchester. My two brothers went there as well. Bruce and you went to went to um Homo Technical High School. So I was like, you know, I want to follow in those footsteps as well. So you know, I end up go to Homo Technical because originally I was supposed to go to Saint Elizabeth Technical, but the um yeah, but the coach from Homewood you know, came came to my house in White House and I was like, nah, your two brothers go to um Homewood, so you have to come to Homewood. And they 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 persuaded my mom and my dad and that is how I, I, I ended up at um at Homewood oh, Technical. What? But it, yeah, but it was a, a, a great choice because you know that that high school really, you know, mm-hmm. taught me how to be be a, a, a nice student of mine and how to take care of myself because it was a boarding school as well. So I didn't have to do everything for myself up there. And yeah, and um, the coach at that time was um, Mr. Lewis, uh-huh. you know, that, that, man, that, that man taught me a lot as well. He passed away now, a couple of years now, but um, that is, you know. That's awesome. The, yeah, yeah, that is awesome stuff. Yeah, so when you went to Homewood, it was a scholarship because I know Homewood, they will spot your talent, especially you know, they're good in sports. So was it like a scholarship you went on or no? No, I didn't went on a scholarship. As I said, my two brothers went there, so. So you just went I, to and you, and you played. But course, I, like, I yeah. like the part where you said that because it was a boarding school, so it kind of helped you to become like a, you know, a refined yeah. young man at that stage. Because I went to an all-girls boarding school too. So, you know, when you go boarding okay. school, you, you learn. Yeah, I went to Westwood High. So you learn, uh, you learn certain yeah, things. Yeah, you learn a lot of things. So like what yeah, did you what did you learn like at that yeah. age? Well, basic stuff you have to learn to take care of yourself. Um, how to cook. You know, you, you know, you have to have proper hygiene and stuff. All them things, how to wash, how to press, all them stuff. Because, you know, my mom didn't, I, I, my mom didn't really teach me them stuff because I was the last one. Yeah. For, yes. for my well. mom. So, yeah. So my mom <laughs> do everything for me up to this day. Whenever... <laughs> Whenever, yeah, whenever, I, yeah, whenever I visit, because I can't do nothing. Even when I tell her no, I can't do nothing. She do everything. So I just, that's her joy and pride. So I just, I just love her to do everything. But yeah, man, you have to learn to cook, wash all them things at, at school, and you know how to carry yourself as a as a as a a, a good young man. 
Right, awesome. Well, that's that's very admirable. All right. So at what point now, because you're in high school, you're playing, at what point were you now, you know, did they reach out to you to say, okay, Jermaine, you're going to try out for the West Indies, maybe like the under, you know, whatever stage. At yeah. what point did that happen? Um. Yeah, when I was at high school, I was doing pretty good. Um. Because back then I was mostly bowling, not really batting. So I was bowling half spin. And like uh, when when we go after like um under 19 at like the national under 19 we play against Barbados, Trinidad and all, and all of that. And normally do do well. I'm normally take a lot of wickets. Yeah. So in 2010, you know, I I I I got selected to to play for the West Indies under 19 team. Wow. Yeah, that yeah so and that, when that happened like what was what was their reaction at that moment like if you if it jogged just go back you know in time what was your reaction when it happened man i was super excited man to be honest because i, I can i can remember because we played it was like before they before they select the team um it was about 20 of us there mm -hmm. and like we, we play some inter squad games and stuff and stuff and you know, to be honest, I didn't really do too well, but like in the tournaments and stuff, I did outstanding. Mm -hmm. And um, I did I did averagely, but me and this guy named Dalton Polius was, you know, competing for the same spot because we do the same thing. We bat, we bowl, we do the same thing. Yeah. And, um, you know, when the chairman came into the room and all of us was in the room now and stuff, and he, he was like, he's going to name the, the, the 50 man squad to go to New Zealand. To, rep mm -hmm. to represent West Indies, and I was like sitting there at the front, and the first team the man called is my name. Oh wow! I was like, yeah, I was like, <laughs> yes. So, <laughs> so I jumped up and said, yes. Everybody was like laughing, so, like Whoo! you know, sign of relief and stuff. And you know, from from that, I didn't really look back to be honest. Yeah. Um, from from that time, yeah. It just continue on that journey all the way up till now. Right. Yeah, that's continue because I, I can I can remember like right after I come back from the the World Cups and and stuff in 2010, I think um I think I I left school around 2011 and I go straight they they took me straight into the Jamaica program the senior team program at, at that stage that I was at like 19 18 I mean I was 18 so I go straight into the Jamaica program was there training with the, the big guys Chris Gale Marlon Summers all of them. We have Heinz, uh, Richard, 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 all of them. So I was training with them and, you know, I played my first practice game and my first practice game, I scored 100. And I was like, they, they were like, wow, it's, it's for the longest time a, a, a youngster come come to the senior challenge and score 100. Yes. Everybody was just, yeah, everybody was just amazed at that time. Yeah, and I was around the setup that time. I didn't really get into the Jamaica 13-man squad, but I was in the 14-man squad that year. For like two mm -hmm. years and then after that then i finally get a one game and then the next year i started to play consistently definitely that is awesome so i mean at that point especially like just reaching into the big leagues and you are like the young star the youngest among them at that point were you like intimidated by the big leagues uh, uh not really to be honest i wasn't really intimidated but you know there was players on the team that i look up to like Chris Gill for sure and um Marlon Summers. I look up to those guys. Mm -hmm. And even Andre Russell were, were all there um mm -hmm. at that, that time. So I was intimidated. I was more inspired and happy to to be around the, the and big to boys. learn from them. That's awesome. Yeah, so I mean, like sure. like you mentioned, those like persons that were with you, but like separate from maybe like other cricketers that have been like they're not playing anymore, but at that point in time. Who inspired you? Like maybe like a Courtney Walsh or you know, like the or a Laura. Like I don't know if any of those greats had inspired you when you were younger. Like you said, like you know, when I grow up, I want to be like them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That? Well, I, well, I was, I would say Viv, Viv for sure. Oh, nice, yeah. and Vivian Richards. Viv. Yeah, Vivian Richards and um Chris Gill at that time. But you know, when I get bigger than bigger, I think Angie Russell inspired me a lot because you know. We, you know, we, we spent a few years together before he started his, 
international cricketing journey and you know I see his journey from down to up so he inspired me for sure because we, we were close together and you know we like train every day and stuff so Andrew Ross was a you know big inspiration for me and in terms of survey what was what was it about him that inspired you as a young well, well to be honest I just like the way how he bat you know the the swag he he he, he has you know what I mean and I, I give God thanks I, I I got some chance you know to work with Viv and you know the same thing he tell me he tell me the same thing um he said man Every time I see, I see myself. I just, you, 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 you like, but the same. You like how I but. I was like, mm-hmm. I was like, really, this man telling me this, and I was young watching this man. I was I always want to be like this man. I know, yes. you know, the legend telling me this. I feel so good in myself. But you know, we will talk and stuff because we went on a few A team tours and stuff. And you know, what I mean, it was it was really good to to learn to learn a lot of stuff from from Viv. That is amazing to see the person that you know you look up to and then being able to work with him in that capacity. That's awesome. So, I mean, Jeremy, like, I mean, having the talent is one thing, but putting in the work is another thing. And a lot of times people look at like sports stars and they think, oh, they're just naturally talented. Do you think it's just pure talent that has gotten you so far or you've had to really work at it as well? Well, I have, I have a little talent, um, but, you know, the, the hard work and the dedication that I put in, that, that is what really get me where I'm at today, to be honest. Because even for prime example, if you, if you want to take Russell, man, you know, you see that guy have a lot of success and stuff, but the work that man put in behind the scenes, I, I see everything. Mm-hmm. And I was like amazed to see, you know, what he accomplished or what he achieved and to see still, even now, he's putting in that amount of work that inspired me to do even more. You understand? Because at, at times I never, sometimes, you know, when I wake up six o'clock or six thirty in the morning to go and run, I don't want to go. Mm. You understand? But now nah, I have to tell myself, nah, you know what I mean? I want to be at the, the, the best at what I do. So I have to get up. I don't, I don't need anyone <laughs> to do any run to go and do my running with. I can go and do it myself. You know, I don't need anyone to go and do the gym. I can do it myself, you know. So, and it's only when I'm, you know, probably doing some batting and stuff, I would probably need someone. But everything apart from that is I just go and do it myself because I know I have to do it and I, I know the stuff that, um, that I want to accomplish. So, you know, hard work is the key for sure. You know, you, you might, I see a lot of guys who have talent and didn't work hard and, you know, there's far to the wayside. You understand? So you have to be willing to put in the work. If you don't want to put in the work, cricket is just not for you, to be honest. And that is a sound advice. And it's not only applicable to cricket, but every area of life, you really want to be like successful, you know? You have yeah, to for sure. Put in that work. So, I mean, you're not from a, a rich background. You're from a humble background, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, for sure, yeah. I'm from a, I'm from a um, poor background um, in White House. Um, grew up very poorly, to be honest. And I, I, think, I think that is one of the... You know, the thing that pushed me as a as a young man, you know, to want to do good and, you know, let my family be proud of me and, you know, all my siblings and stuff be proud. Mm-hmm. I understand because, you know, my father was a fisherman and stuff, you know, and, you know, my mom used to do a little bit of cleaning back then and stuff. Not now. They're good now, but um, like, back then. Help, help for like house cleaning. Yeah, my mom. Mom was a, yeah, my mom was a helper back then and stuff and, you know, mm-hmm. I, my age, you know, it's pain, painful to, to see those stuff happen. And I just tell myself that, you know, I want to, you know, give my mom a better house, you know, um, a better life, sorry. And, you know, can build up, you know, a nice house for them where, you know, they can be more comfortable because we didn't grow up rich mm. or anything like that. We grew up poor. So I know, you know, all of that, I know, you know, how it feels. You know, to go through that day hungry and all them things. So them things, you know, normally just build me. You know what I mean? And you know, I get give give God thanks. A good thing my 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 family is a is a I'm in a Christian home. So my mom is a Christian, my father is a Christian sometimes. And that's 
Yeah, so I I, I, yeah, I grew I grew up with a very Christian um background. Background, yeah. So yeah, um, my parents taught us good, um, at, even now, to be honest. So, yeah. you know, as I said, we grew up poor, but give thanks to Father God to where I'm at right now. Definitely, and I love that. I really love you sharing that because. It shows that it doesn't matter like where you come from or your situation or your circumstance. Like if you are, if you're putting the work and you're determined, you can change things around. So I mean, what was it like for you now when you, you know, you you start your boss now as a cricketer and you start making mm -hmm. like good money? Like what was it like that for you? Like, you know? Yeah. Um. It was a good feeling to be honest, because the first time when I played for was tennis and. I not even didn't know how much was the salary back then. To be honest, I was just excited, you mm -hmm. know, to play for West Indies. And you know, what I mean, when I when one of the players asked me, <laughs> Kirk Edwards, <laughs> we was we were sitting down and he was like, "Little man, do you know how much money you're gonna get for these two games?" I was like, "No." Mm -hmm. When he told me the figure, I was like, "Nah, boy, like man, I get goosebump." Same time. What, what was and the that, figure at the time? Huh? What was the figure at the time? A fast uh, <laughs> well, Oh well, the figure at the time was 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 seventeen thousand. Seventeen thousand US. Yeah, a game mm -hmm. at that time. Not at that, exactly because it's it's, it's it's much more it's now. Lower. No, it's lower. It's lower now. Yeah. It's oh way no. Lower. Not oh, even no. double that now, but um, yeah, but at that 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 time, I was like, whew, you know. So I didn't feel good in myself, you know, when I check my bank account and. I, and I said, I see some money coming to my account for the first time. I was like, hmm, I have to work harder because I want I want more of this, to be honest. Definitely. That you know, it it for them say it sweetens encouragement, sweeten labor. So I mean, <laughs> well, yeah, getting that. And then that obviously put you in a position where you know were able to change the situation for your family. Yeah, for sure. You know, mm -hmm. I built up a house in a small and plan to do some more expand expand expansion on it soon um but it's very comfortable and you know it's good size also my mom and my dad you know my brother so you know i'm in a pretty decent position now for myself financially that is awesome especially when you know they, you look at other young people and to see that you are able to really do that that's that's really wonderful and i'm sure you know they are indeed grateful and your community they must be like so excited whenever you come around they're like star celebrity in the building yeah man we have some we have a, um my auntie um so she's like <laughs> one of my number one supporter from i was small from like he was always be there with my, with, with my mom to every game wow every game yeah her name is angela yeah she was like always oh, there for sure and she's you know one of my biggest supporters that's awesome. sure, out of my family yeah so Jermaine, i mean you know we've heard a, a bit about your story and um, we've seen your successes at the same time the west indies its journey has been up and down sometimes you guys doing well sometimes you're not doing so well as still a youngster in the in the on the field, but somebody at the same time who is rising and has risen, like what has been like your biggest challenge so far in the sport? Um, my I would say my biggest challenge is when I I got I got dropped from the from the Western team. When was that? Two thousand seventeen. I think that was you know. The turning point in my life, you know, I did have to make a lot of changes. Then, you know, I have to sacrifice a lot, and you know, what I mean, I did have to make a lot of little changes back then. And um, to see, you know, I could really overcome that, and you know, get back in the team, you know, was a great feeling for me. And I know what, and I, I know, I know what it's like to be like get dropped out of the team and stuff, you know. So I don't, I don't ever. Wanna 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 go back there, yeah. you know? So you know that 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 that's, that that would be the biggest part for me, yeah. For, for real, and even in that moment of 
I guess maybe failure because nothing is really a failure because you learn from it. But you said you had to make some changes. Care to share maybe a few that you can state publicly that you had to do to really change well, things around? Well, a lot of, a lot of the financial changes for sure. And the way how, you know, I look, I look at things, I look at life and the way how I train, you know, they have to step up my training game because I was like, I have to do double now because, you know, when I get job, you know, you have to, you have, you have, you have, you have to do double to get back in the team. And that is exactly what I, what I, what I, what I did. That's awesome. So it's like learning the lessons and then, you know, adjusting and then know you're back on top. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. That's awesome. So, I mean, looking at where you're at now, do you feel, you know, I'm not to say that, okay, you've made it, but do you have that kind of sense of feeling like, yeah, from Little German in White House, Westmoreland, to where you're at now, you feel like that, like you've made it? No, not really. I still have a, I still have a lot to, to accomplish in my cricketing career. Mm -hmm. To be honest, um, I don't hit the point where I want to hit yet in my cricketing career. So, but I'm working extremely hard to hit that. And I hopefully in the next, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm working, I'm working my way to, to at least get next year. By this time, I want to, I want, I want, I want to be in the, 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 the world bucket, batting ranking at, at least at number 15 or 10. You know, I'm at right now, I'm, I'm at 34 right now. So I know once I can, you know, um, score some runs in the in this last series for the year in Sri Lanka in November. I know I will get down probably into the twenties and then start fresh again next year. So you know, I have a lot of stuff to achieve, but I know what I need to do. And um, you know, once I keep um, put it in my work and you know just continue to trust my process, you know everything will be all right. For real, and you seem to be like somebody who is very self-driven, self-motivated, like. Where does that come from? Is it like by, I don't know what you, what you do for motivation, like other people or books or videos or, I don't know. Where does it come from? Well, to be honest, nothing don't really have to motivate me, to be honest. My son motivate me. My family motivate, motivate me as well. My girlfriend motivate me. So I don't really, my friends motivate me. So I don't really need much to motivate me. Once I, I set my mind on something, I'm going to get it done regardless. Definitely, it's like having that sense of purpose and saying, okay, this is my goal, this is my target, I'm going to achieve it. All right, yeah. so I mean, planning for the future though, Jeremy, yes, you are still young and everything, but you mentioned you've had an experience in the past where you were dropped and then not having to overcome that. How, you know, so many times we see like sports stars, they do extremely well and then later on in life, you know, so how do you set in place whatever decisions whether financial or otherwise to make sure that you know after cricket you have stability well i i have a couple you know business venture that i want to take on in the future for sure and um i know in time they're gonna come to life in a few years so and um you know good thing i have a, a nice girl who you know always you know be there for me Mm. and keep on telling me new stuff so awesome. yeah i think that i think that's a a big thing as well that's that's so sweet <laughs> um but what keeps you grounded because i love especially being like okay somebody who's popular that can easily get to your head so how do you like keep grounded as an individual as i said man um uh, yeah well it's because of the i would say because of the background that I, that I came from. I come from a very humble um, background, so I don't need to hype or anything out of, the, out of the norm. You know, I'm just gonna always stay grounded. Don't care what I achieve in life, I'm gonna always be this way, right True. Awesome. All right, so I'm winding down, but on a lighter note, because we've been talking a lot of deep stuff. <laughs> yeah. On a lighter note, what, what do you do for fun? Well, and to be honest, I'm not a fun guy to be honest. I like, I like, I like, I like to drive. Okay. Like, you know I mean, I, li I like to drive and, you know, I like to go to the beach sometimes. 
because I live so close to the beach, beach in White House, that I'm used to the beach. Mm-hmm. So from you know, I was small and stuff, I always go to the beach. And my father was a fisherman, so I'm always in the beach. I like the fishing. Yes, that's I like awesome. I like the, yeah, I like the fishing, I like to drive, I like to cook sometimes. <laughs> Why you cook? Uh, I'll, everything, man. Can cook. Wicked. Bad in the kitchen. Wicked. Really? Yeah, wicked. What you call bad? Like some fried egg? <laughs> I can't cook anything, man. I, but the see, thing is, we only cook when we eat. You understand? So, it's like steam fish and that. Wicked pan steam fish. Nah. And if I'm a chicken, I can cook chicken. Vegetable, wicked. Wow. We need to get more better than the bacon and everything about, you know? Okay. Over time. So we need to have yeah. another show where we visit Germany and we actually see Germany in action, cooking up a stove. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, all right. So my final question to you, Jermaine. A lot of persons who are watching this interview and they see you as a young man who is a popular cricketer, doing well, blazing your own trade in your own right, coming from humble beginnings, but you have you know, turn your, your situation around, not only for yourself, but also your family. What words would you want to share with other people to say that, you know, you can be a success no matter the challenges, no matter the obstacles, no matter where you're coming from? Well, you know, I would say, you know, find something that you love and just put in 110% in it. Don't, don't don't care if you know you may fall sometime or you, you may not get the result same time but you know just continue believe in the process and know that once you work hard you know everything will take care of it at itself that, that that is my motto once once you work hard everything will play out in time you don't have to be today or tomorrow or here but we probably in the next two years so just keeps you know focusing on it and keep pushing hard you know, and don't forget to 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 um believe in Father God, because that's the man. Indeed, wow, that's amazing. Thank you so much, Jeremy. I didn't want to ask a lot of um sports questions per se. I really wanted this interview to be focused more on your personal journey, not so much in terms. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Yeah, not so much in terms of the intricacies of the game. Because I'm yeah. sure a good friend of mine who is a cricket analysis, Perry Scott, may be watching yeah. this. <laughs> Perry, yes, I, I wasn't going to ask Jeremy any deep cricket questions. I wanted it to focus more on your journey. So thank you so much for coming on the Trailblazers and inspiring and keep on blazing your trail. I We expect even greater things from you in the coming months, weeks, and years to come. Thank you for having me on your show. Thank you. Hey everyone, I am Tamara McHale, television and radio presenter, producer, communication specialist, and of course, producer and host of the Trailblazer series. I'm inviting you to join the family. All you have to do is just click that subscribe button. Make sure you hit that notification bell so you're alerted as to when we have new episodes. And join our family for weekly inspiring episodes that will not only lift your spirits, but give you the tools, the keys, and the strategies that you need so that you can blaze your trail.